guys, my name is Trin and today I'm here to film my favorite books of 2019 video. In 2019, I read 100 books, which is a really great accomplishment. If you haven't watched my disappointing books of 2019, I will have it linked down in the description box below. But now we're gonna talk about my favorite books of 2019. I'm so excited for this. I even wear my best shirt, okay? I love this shirt so much and if you're curious, I got this from Forever 21. Basically, I have 10 books to talk about and yes, I actually ranked them so in the past I never ranked my books in the past I have talked about the books I read from January to December because I don't want to show favoritism I guess but now I'm gonna show favoritism okay all of these books are really great but I feel like the top two books are like the ones that I love the most don't look too closely to how I rank the books okay like I said there are 10 books but I have one honorable mention because this story is really great let's talk about The Vault by Ray Bradbury I read the short story in December and I really really loved it so in this story we follow a couple they live in this futuristic house basically so this house you can tell it to do whatever it want and then it would do it for you so for example if you're like hey I want milk milk is right there that's how amazing it is there's a room called the nursery and the parents have been putting their children in the nurseries in this room basically when you're in it and then you use your imagination to conjure up certain settings or like certain places and all that fun stuff you will see it right in front of you in the beginning of this short story the wife is kind of paranoid because she has been seeing this vault in the nursery for like quite a while so of course they're all like what is going on why is the vault only in this nursery nursery room and then of course they're interrogating their children like hey what's going on this short story is so freaking good because I feel like it really applies to our culture right now the fact that we're always using our technology and the fact that we depend on it on everything if you think about it we use our technology for every single thing and then of course the fact that we let young children using it too is also a thing that i've been seeing a lot like how i see parents giving their children an ipad to get them to shut up i talked about this short story with my class and we really delve into like the characters and the vault the nursery and how technology is being used in the short story it's just really good i believe you can find this online all right now let's Let's get to this video. So starting at number 10, I have the Scythe Trilogy right here. So this is Scythe by Neil Schusterman. I read all three books in 2019. For the majority of time, I actually enjoy um, all three of them. So my favorite is Thunderhead. This is the second book. I think it's the best one because we really get to know the characters. We get some new characters and then we get to know the Thunderhead. Who is God, okay, in this world? I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm really sorry so the first book scythe it follows our two characters citra and rowan a scythe named scythe faraday recruits them and he's like i want you guys to be trained at scythe in this world death has been conquered everyone is immortal in a way but in order to control the population growth we have Scythe. Their job is to glean people. Citra and Rowan, they're the apprentices of Scythe Faraday and then eventually they have to compete against one another to be a Scythe. So that's the first book and then the second book is just so freaking good. Oh my god, it was so good. And then the third book, The Tall, this came out in November and if you have watched my disappointing books of 2019, yeah, that's like the title of the video, wow. You will see this book in that video because I talked about The Tall and how the end ending isn't the best that's why this series is like number 10 because i'm just not a big fan of the ending of the last book but i don't regret reading this in 2019 i think this is definitely one of the best series i've read out there but you know the last book isn't the best so but that's just my opinion you might like it coming at number nine we have Vicious by V.E. Schwab. So I have a very interesting journey with this book because I read the first half and then I put it down for like months and then I picked it up and then I read the last half and I was like, whoa. That was really good. So in this book, we follow two characters, Victor and Eli. Basically, when they're in college, Eli has this experiment going on and Victor is like, yeah, let's do it. So basically, it's about egos. People who have supernatural abilities and in order to get it, you must almost die. These two dumbasses decide to do this experiment in college 10 years later. So the 10 years later, that's the present time. Victor has been in jail for 10 years and he gets out of jail 
and then he's like determined to like take down Eli. Meanwhile, Eli has been killing people with EOs, like supernatural abilities, like yeah, you get it. So Eli is killing people, Victor wants to fucking defeat Eli. That's basically the story of this book. This book is definitely one of a kind. I kid you not, after I finished it, I was just like, holy shit because we get to see victor and eli when they're in college and then we get to see them when they're adults and so much has happened since then but then of course we get other characters as well majority of them have supernatural abilities it's kind of crazy how everyone has something different i know that we have a character who can bring people back from the dead that's crazy okay that happens in this book the way this book ends makes me give it five out of five stars it's really really good and i have not read the sequel vengeful and i'm kind of iffy about that one because i've heard like mixed things about vengeful so i will try to read it in 2020 but like this book you need to read it okay it's just so freaking good coming at number eight we have red white and royal blue by casey McQuiston. yeah i got right wow i actually forgot the author's name oh my god so this book is about our two main characters alex and henry alex is the son of the president of the united states henry is prince henry from england in the beginning of this book they don't like each other at all and then eventually they get past that they become friends and then they you know became lovers so it's just really great i think the rep is also really good so alex is half white half hispanic and he's also bisexual prince henry is straight up white but he's gay so i think the rap is really really good and not just that the characters are really good we have the side characters i love them i just love this story very much it's very cute but then it gives me hope at the end because basically this takes place in 2020 and the president is a woman which is fucking great and then of course at the end of this book we have the re-election alex mom has been in the office for four years so of course the re-election is scary because guess what we're in 2020 right now. We live in a society that's just not really good. So this book gives me a tiny ounce of hope and that's all I can ask for. Really, really enjoy this book. If you like new adult romance novels, pick this book up. Coming at number seven is The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. This graphic novel follows our two main characters, Prince Sebastian and Francis. So Francis is a dressmaker and of course Prince Sebastian is the prince and this book really explores gender norms because Prince Sebastian likes to wear dresses and basically his other name is Lady Cristalia. Basically he hires Francis to make dresses for him. It's just about that. It's about their friendship and of course the fact that Francis wants to to be like a well-known designer. Prince Sebastian is going through a lot regarding his status as a prince because he feels a lot of pressure to marry someone because his parents really want him to marry someone to, you know, expand their family. So it's really, really cute. And I was just so happy reading this graphic novel. And like I said, I love, love the illustrations. Everything is just so colorful and it's so pretty. And the story is also really good and the characters are great. So I love this graphic novel very much. Coming at number six, is Dear Girls by Ali Wong. I have this cover, Ali Wong, in 2019 and I'm so glad I did because I really love her. If you don't know, she is a stand-up comedian. She has two Netflix comedy specials, Baby Cobra and Heart Knock Wife. And then, of course, when I found out that she came out with her own book, I read it. Well, actually, I listened to an audiobook and I loved it so much. It was really great. So this book is very different because it's like a mix of a memoir because we get to learn about her life. But then also, it's like, an advice book because Dear Girls is for her daughters. We get to learn so much about her life. I already know a lot because I watched Baby Cobra and Heart Knock Wife multiple times so I know a lot about Ali Wong. But then in this book, I love the fact that we get to know about her dating life in New York and how she felt really lonely and how she met her husband and how supportive her husband is. Oh my god, he's amazing. He's wonderful. But I think the part that really stands out to me is the chapter where she goes back to VA Vietnam for a semester. I think she went back to Hanoi which is the capital of Vietnam and I love that chapter so much because she talks about the culture, the food, the people that she met. I love this book and if you don't know Ali Wong is half Chinese, half Vietnamese. Yeah that makes sense. I really appreciate this book. I really appreciate Ali Wong. I'm so glad I discovered her in 2019. Coming at number five is Wicked Fox 
by Kat Cho. I read this book in December and I'm so glad I did because you know it's on this list and it's pretty high up if you think about it. But like I said, don't look too closely to how I rank the books, okay? Sometimes it don't make sense. So this book follows our two main characters, Chi Hoon and Mi Young. So Mi Young is a Gumi Ho, and a Gumi Ho is a nine-tailed fox. Basically, in the beginning of this book, Chi Hoon, the guy right here, he gets attacked by a goblin, and then Mi Young rescues the boy, Chi Hoon. But of course, during this battle, her her fox speed escapes from her. Throughout this entire book, she just gets weak and weak and weak because the fox speed is not inside her body where it should be. This story is really about their relationship and how they became friends and then, you know, they got together a little bit. But then, of course, it's also about Mi Young and her mother. Oh my god. Family relationship is just really important in this book because we have Chi Hoon's mom, Chi Hoon's grandmother, Mi Young's mom, and then this other character, Nara, and her grandmother. It's crazy crazy, okay? Just like a lot of drama. The plot twist is really good because it was spaced out. I just really enjoy it because this takes place in Seoul and not just that we have good characters and they're all relatable in some way and Chi Hoon, I like the fact that he's just like a lazy person who plays video games but I feel for him because he only has his grandmother. Meanwhile, Mi Young, she was abandoned by her own father and she only has her mom but her relationship with her mom is so complicated because her mom is really mean. She's cruel. There's more going on. It's really good but I really really enjoy it and I cannot wait to read the sequel because it's coming out in the fall of 2020. Coming at number four we have Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. This book <laughs> is a book that um, people like and don't like. It's a polarizing book. I'm on the side of people who really, really adore this book. I have come to the realization that I really love books where the main character loves reading and loves books and all that fun stuff because you will see another one later. So in this book, we follow Elizabeth and she lives at the Great Library. She was an orphan, but she was taken in. The books in the Great Library is like grimoire. So if you piss one off it will become like a demon. In the beginning of this book I believe the director was killed. Elizabeth was framed for the murder so she was sent to the capital. She befriends Nathaniel Hawk. Nathaniel Thorne? I keep saying Nathaniel Hawthorne and I'm pretty damn sure it's not his name. Nathaniel Thorne. <laughs> so she befriends Nathaniel Thorne but she doesn't really trust him because he's a sorcerer. She was raised to believe that sorcerers are evil people. This book is like a combination of the Infernal Devices trilogy, Harry Potter, and Full Metal Alchemist just a little bit, okay? I love Elizabeth. I think she's a great character. People say she's bland and stuff. I was like, no, I, I love her. She's so brave. Whenever she gets into danger and she has to do shit herself, she she does it herself. I really like Nathaniel as well. I think his backstory with his family, oh man, that's very important. And then of course we have Silas and he's like a demon servant. Is that it? Demonic servant. Yeah, that's like a thing. So he's a cat, but he can change his form so he can be a human as well. Damn, this book is really good. I think the only critique that I have is that the villain is like a one dimensional villain and then the ending was really rushed. Still, I appreciate this book. I love the writing. I love the quotes. I love the little hints that the author put. They are important for the ending. So really appreciate this book. So coming at number three, we have Fullmetal Alchemist manga series. So this is by ooh, Hiromu Arakawa. I think I said it wrong. I know that Jonathan's gonna watch this and he's like, ooh, damn girl, you said it wrong. In the beginning of the year, I watched the anime. It's on Netflix, Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood. Chef's kiss, okay? If you're asking me like, should I watch the anime or read the manga? I say watch the anime. The animation is timeless. Did you know that the anime came out in 2009? Everything looks good. The music is phenomenal. But since I am me, after I finished the anime, I decided to read the manga series. It was just good. So I appreciate the manga because without this, we don't have the anime. This manga series follow a bunch of characters, but our two main characters are Edward and Alphonse. Ed is Fomino Alchemist and then his brother Al, basically his soul is being bound to this suit of armor because when they were really young, they were 
were trying to bring their mother back from the dead but of course that is unacceptable you cannot do it they both suffer the consequences so I believe Edward he lost his right arm his left leg meanwhile Al the younger brother lost his entire body so that's why his soul is being connected to the suit of armor and then of course in order to get their bodies back they're trying to find the philosopher's stone they have to work for the military because when you work for the military you will get access to like the books and the knowledge and all these things and then that's when we get to find out the conspiracy behind everything so good it's so good and like i said watch the anime if you don't want to read the manga because the anime is so 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 good we have two books left to talk about when i was making this list it was really hard to determine my number one book okay of 2019 i was really positive that these two books will be like up top okay these are the books that really stood out to me in 2019 but i'm like who's gonna be number one and i've made my decision so the number two book is the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This book was very popular in 2018 and I did not read it that year because I didn't have time. But I read this in 2019, the beginning of the year so good and then i actually just reread this book because i always love rereading like an old favorite for like the first book of the year the first book of 2020 was this and that's how you start off the year so this book follows our main character evelyn hugo she is a very well-known actress in the 50s 60s 70s and if you don't know she is cuban american but not just that she is bisexual as well so in the beginning of the book she hires a journalist named monique to write a book about her life. That's all I can say because in this book you get to learn everything about Evelyn Hugo. Basically we follow her since she was like 14 to when she's 79. We follow her entire journey from I think New York to Hollywood and how she became an actress and how she was married to seven husbands because there's always a story behind each marriage. We have some amazing characters. They're so realistic and I think that's why this book you know is fucking good is because the characters feel real. Our main character Evelyn Hugo feels so real she is a good and bad person she's a complex character she really is and then of course this book we really get to know how hollywood treats people who are gay there's also biphobia in this book and there's also domestic abuse in this book just a lot in this book so it is a very heavy book we actually see a few people die be very cautious when you read this book but this is a masterpiece okay it's so good coming at number one is Love and Other Words by Christina Warren. Now, the reason why it's number one is just because it's a very personal book for me. We follow a main character, Macy. So in the beginning of this book, she is reunited with like an old boyfriend named Elliot. And then we find out that they grew up together. So they fell in love when they were teenagers, like when they're like 18. Things happen and then Macy just cut Elliot out of her life for 11 years. This is told in alternate timeline so present past so present they're 29 past they were so young i think they were like 10 to 18 so we really get to see how they grew up together how they met how literature bonded those two characters together because they both love reading so this is like the book that i read you know where the characters love reading so like i said this book is a very personal book for me because i relate to macy regarding her parents death i lost my dad when i was young macy lost her mom when she was young and then of course i love reading macy and elliot love reading and then of course in this book whenever macy thinks about her relationship with elliot it's the same thoughts that i had like a couple months before i read this book so i feel like i read this at the perfect time in my life it's crazy to see my thoughts my feelings my struggle in this book okay objectively it's still good but the ending is really rush basically Macy kicked Elliot out of her life for like 11 years like I said for a very good reason because things happened when they were 18 and it really fucked her up but of course he didn't know about it it was his fault okay partially 
maybe it was his fault entirely I don't remember but yeah it was his fault a little bit but he was forgiven really easily so that put me off and then of course the ending is really rushed at this point I'm fucking used to it I'm still annoyed a little bit because a lot of the books that I read in 2019 the ending is always rushed but since this book means so much to me I'm willing to look past that and just appreciate for what it is and like I said I read this book at the perfect time in my life that's why this book is number one on this list and that is it for today's video. It's getting dark now and my voice hurts now, my feet hurts now, I haven't eaten lunch. It's time to put an end to this. It was really fun to just, you know, spend 45 minutes talking about these books. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more videos and I will see you guys later. Goodbye!